Good morning, Broadway. It's my pleasure to welcome you today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to worship. And we're so happy that you're joining us online. We're also now worshiping outdoors from 4 to 5 p.m. each Sunday evening in the Broadway parking lot. So we invite you to come out for this special time of worship. And we also do celebrate Holy Communion with one another as well. Today is Pentecost Sunday. It's the day that we celebrate the coming of the promised Holy Spirit and also the birth of the church. Today we'll hear about both wind and fire, two of my favorite things. And so I hope that today's worship service will fill you with the Spirit so that you may be an agent of Christ's love in the world and to all who you meet each day. Let us now worship our great God together. Let us enter into the call to worship together. With tongues of flame, the Holy Spirit descends to burn in our hearts anew. Unite us, Holy Spirit. Like the rush of wind, we sense God's presence blowing afresh throughout the world. Unite us, Holy Spirit. Across the barriers of language and culture, Christ's message of love and grace is heard. Unite us, Holy Spirit. Divine Advocate, we seek your guidance as we search for the Spirit of Truth. Unite us, Holy Spirit. Amen. As we gather this morning, we light a candle. Though we are physically apart, we share the light of Christ together in this way, remembering we are united in the Spirit of love and grace. Thank you. 
Now we'd like to share with you a lesson from the contemporary church because God did not stop speaking into our lives when the book went to press. Today we have with us Dorian Poole, who will share with us her work with maternal child health from her perspective as a grandmother. Hello, Broadway. My name is Dorian Poole. I am a part of a group here at Broadway called Mother's Child, Child Health. Broadway is a participant in this with Greater Faith House of Prayer, IU Health, and IU School of Medicine. It's called a Spiritual Care Project. That is a long title for a very important project to find ways to reduce mother and baby deaths in our neighborhood. Broadway sits in one of the three zip codes that have the highest infant mortality in Indiana. The infant mortality rate in Indiana is 20% higher than the national average. And black infants die twice as often as white infants. Isn't that scary? It's been a while since I had babies, but I have four grand granddaughters ages 11 to three. It is amazing how much has been learned in the 40 years since I was a mom. Research shows that stress is the biggest factor in maternal health. We need to find ways to support and reduce stress for mothers here in this area. Lack of sleep, poor nutrition, inadequate medical care before and after birth, and postpartum depression contribute to this problem. There's been a lot of research on infant mortality, and it's been in the area of safe sleep. So much has changed since I had babies. Since 1994, doctors have known that babies need to sleep on their backs, on a firm mattress, with no soft items. No blankets, no toys or bottles, No extra clothing, no, like hats. Babies can scooch into a corner or against a blanket or some other soft item and create a pocket of air that they breathe over and over again. And this rebreathing of their own exhale causes asphyxiation. Sleep sacks like this one and one-piece sleepers are the best clothing for them to wear while sleeping. Under no circumstances should babies sleep in the same bed as the parent or parents. On the back, alone, whoops, on a firm mattress. Infant mortality rates have improved since this was learned but it is something that not everyone knows. Immigrants and grandparents are often not aware of the improvements in knowledge. So we need to keep sharing this information. We still need to work to find ways to protect our babies and improve the survival of these most precious little ones. If you would like to be a part of the Mother Child Health Program, contact the church office and ask for my telephone number. Thank you for your time. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, 
and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Holy words, holy wisdom. Thanks be to God. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Somebody needs Let us pray. Move among us, Spirit, and gather us together with you. Take our many selves, our lives, our loves, our ideas, our questions, our speech, our silence, and unite us as your people. Give us the gifts of perception and understanding 
so that even as we dream your dreams and see your visions, we may be able to witness to your presence in our common life. Amen. Well, today is Pentecost. It is a day where the church and parishioners often get all decked out in red to celebrate the fulfillment of Christ's promise to send the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church. And I love this day because once again, God surprises us, just like in the ordinary elements of water and baptism and bread and wine at the Lord's Supper, God chooses to swoop in with the wind and breathe Christ's very spirit upon us. Now we know that the spirit can scare us, it can comfort us, it can energize us, and even clarify things for us. It is what holds us together in a community of faith, even though we've been apart for over a year. It is what keeps hope alive in us, even when things seem hopeless. And it is how God chose to animate the life of the church until Christ returns. The Spirit is the breath of life that brought life into Jesus through Mary. And when Jesus breathed his last, last breath, willingly giving it up out of his love for us, that cosmic breath did not just simply fade away. No, God had other ideas. Christ's breath was so full of life and love that it grew. It grew in strength in volume, into a mighty wind, which God set spinning through Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. God wanted those closest to Jesus to inherit his breath and continue to breathe it on people around the world. Luke tells us first that there were 120 of them gathered together, still reeling from the ascension and unsure what the future without Jesus would look like. Then, all of a sudden, they heard a, hur a holy hurricane outside. And before they could take cover, the mighty wind had blown through the entire house. The tiny sparks began to fly then, and they burst into flames over their heads. And they were filled with the breath of God's Spirit. Then, unexpectedly, their lungs contracted and out came languages that they had never spoken before. It was a thunderous explosion of sound like Times Square just after the ball drops to welcome a new year. They made such a commotion that they began to draw a crowd of people, people from all over the world who had gathered in Jerusalem for the Harvest Festival, one of the three major pilgrimage festivals of Judaism. People began bursting in and pushing into the house through the windows and through the doors, amazed to hear their own languages being spoken so far from home. But what they found when they looked inside was not Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and others, but rather a ragtag bunch of Galileans shouting exuberantly about the mighty acts of God in Jesus Christ. At that very, on that very day, the church grew from 120 to over 3,000. And as Barbara Brown Taylor observes, shy people had become bold, and scared people had become gutsy, and lost people had found a sense of direction. Disciples who would not believe themselves capable of trying tying their own sandals without Jesus, discovered abilities within themselves that they never knew that they had. When they opened their mouth to speak, they sounded like Jesus. When they laid their hands upon the sick, it was as if Jesus himself had touched them. In short order, they were doing things that they had never seen anyone but Jesus do. And there was no explanation for it except that they had dared to inhale on the day of Pentecost. 
They had sucked in God's own breath and they had been transformed by it. The Holy Spirit entered into them the same way it had entered into Mary, the mother of Jesus, and for the same reason. It was time for God to be born again, not in one body this time, but in a body of believers who would receive the breath of life from their Lord and pass it on using their own bodies to distribute the gift. Last week, we talked about the disciples' profound feeling of absence in Christ's ascension, but also their trust in what Jesus promised, which allowed them to worship in expectation. Now, with the promise of Christ's presence fulfilled through the Spirit, the next stage of God's work in the world was launched. The whole book of Acts then goes on and is dedicated to the improbable reality that through the Spirit's movement, the ministry of love, hope, healing, justice, mercy, and peace that Jesus embodied completely would now be embodied in them, in the body of Christ, the church. And now, here we are, over 2,000 years later as a testament to God's faith in trusting the Spirit to us. I wonder, though, as we emerge from this global pandemic, do we believe that the best God has in store for us as a faith community is still before us? Do we believe that God still acts powerfully through the Spirit like on that first Pentecost? I know the Holy Spirit is difficult for us to fully comprehend. Jesus didn't help us much either. As he said in the Gospel of John, the Spirit blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. And while we can try to learn about the Holy Spirit in several good books written about it, I think, like many things, the Spirit is best understood by feeling it blowing through your own life, rearranging things, opening things up, and maybe even lighting your head on fire. The only way to have such an experience, though, is to pray a prayer. I prayed this prayer more and more lately. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And as I've prayed those simple words, I've been amazed at the abundance the Spirit reveals. Now, in fact, I often pray, Holy Spirit, don't fail me now, as I take another deep breath of the Spirit and take a leap of faith. But if you don't want to change, if you don't want to have your life transformed, please do not pray for the Holy Spirit to come. But if you're like me, and you like to stand out, maybe on your porch or out on the sidewalk as a storm is moving in, just to feel the power of the wind blowing in the trees and the clouds moving all around and the electricity in the air, then you are probably a good candidate for praying the Holy Spirit prayer. After you pray through the other part of the equation is recognizing when the Spirit comes. It's always good to discern when it's the Spirit from some bad Thai food you might have had last night for dinner. Personally, I have three simple questions I use in my discernment. First, I ask, is it life-giving or death-dealing? Next, I ask myself, is it adding to the light or contributing to the darkness? And then lastly, I ask, is this drawing myself and others closer together or building barriers between us? The movement of the Holy Spirit is life-giving, light-multiplying, and community-building. And once you begin to be open to the Spirit. It's amazing how often you begin to see it at work in your life, in the lives of others, and even in a whole community. 
Barbara Brown Taylor again observes, whenever two plus two does not equal four, but five, whenever you find yourself speaking with eloquence, you know that you do not have, or offering forgiveness, you, would, you did not mean to offer. Whenever you find yourself taking risks, you thought you did not have the courage to take, or reaching out to someone you had intended to walk away from, you can be pretty sure that you were learning about the gospel of the Holy Spirit. And more than that, you were taking part in it, breathing it in and breathing it out, taking God into you and giving God back to the world again with some of you attached. Breathe in the Spirit. Breathe. Christ is always as close as your next breath. The gift has been given. Distribute it freely because the Spirit promises this is going to be a wild and wonderful ride and we get to experience it with Jesus together. Amen. As we prepare to enter into a time of prayer together, uh, we have a few joys and concerns to share with one another. First, we'd like to offer condolences to Manuel Aguilar and his family upon the passing of his sister, Beth. Uh, prayers for you all as you uh, navigate this new time and just prayers for comfort for you uh, throughout. Our thoughts are with you. We want to also offer continued prayers for Dr. Walt Tinsley and for Greg Spratt and Pam Bay, and also for Carol New Frauman's friend, Cassie. Continue to lift them up and pray for healing for each of them. We also want to pray for an end to the violence in Israel and Palestine, and we want to continue to pray for liberation for the Palestinian people. And so, as we enter into a time of prayer together, let's take a moment of silence to offer our thoughts and prayers to the Lord. Spirit of the living God, dance with us on this day. Come a whirlwind of wonder. Sing to the groaning of creation. Come still small voice of hope. Inflame us with your passion for justice. Come liberator of the least. Purify us of our grasping greediness. Come, advocate of selfless living. Silence our gossiping tongues. Come, harmony of God's heart. Wind of God, blow through us. Fire of God, burn within us. Tongue of God, speak to us on this day of renewal and birth. Even as we pray, as Jesus teaches us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
Let us now affirm our mission. As followers of Jesus Christ, responding to God's love, our mission as the people of Broadway Church is to be a multicultural Christian community that in its ministry seeks, welcomes, and values all people. Go now with these words of blessing and benediction. Let us go now as spirited people, powerful as the wind blowing for justice and energetic as fire in extending the love of Christ. Be builders of understanding and makers of peace. Amen.